So guys, today we are going to be mixing it up again a little bit by doing a first time flashlight review. And this flashlight is going to be, or this review is going to be about the Mech Army SPX-10 flashlight, this one here. And before we dig into this, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more wintry, awesome Alaskaness. So guys, I'm going to be rolling in some light footage on this little flashlight. I also have up on the table for comparison an Innova T2 flashlight, and it is a similarly powered flashlight, similarly sized flashlight as well, so that's why I brought it out today for comparison. <clears throat> Tell not running any decided to switch up and not run any tabletop decorations aside from frozen leaves and lots and lots of snow. So, anyways, looking at this flashlight or getting into this flashlight, <clears throat> this is like I said, the SPX 10 flashlight by Mech Army, and it is a very powerful flashlight. This is an 1100 lumen 18650 flashlight, and so it's pretty standard in those ways. It takes one. 18650 which I will pop this thing off <clears throat> here real fast show you guys just one 18650 nothing too special here I will note that this is the uh, one that comes with it and one thing that's kind of nice about this battery in particular is that it is USB rechargeable in and of itself like it has a little area where you can <clears throat> USB recharge it so you can actually plug that battery into a micro USB and charge it up. So that's kind of nice, really handy if it's if you're on the fly. Means you don't have to carry a specialized charging unit for your rechargeable 18650s. Means that you can actually just charge the battery itself. So I kind of like that feature in the battery and it's a pretty neat choice of a battery they went through. <clears throat> Another thing I will note here and I will try and show it to you guys is one thing I kind of like about the flashlight <clears throat> digging into features which this flashlight is quite features rich. If you're screwing down the flashlight, hopefully you guys caught that. Uh, one thing that you'll note is to make sure that you have the proper orientation on your flashlight or that, or the battery is properly oriented or that your battery has a charge on it. <clears throat> While you're screwing in your battery, it will uh, momentarily hit, like you guys see a, a quick flicker of the battery or of the flashlight, letting you know that the, one, the battery has juice in it, and two, that you have the terminals in the correct orientation. And that's something that I've actually never seen on another flashlight that I thought was pretty nifty. I actually kind of like it because it's a visual feedback that the flashlight provides. Other than this, this is a very waterproof flashlight. I'm going to try and hopefully show you guys here. Uh, starting with the back of this flashlight, I'm just going to quickly set this aside. Uh, you actually have two o-rings you guys can see here two rubber o-rings on the back and then this flashlight does actually break into three pieces aside from the battery three individual pieces so you can see there and then on the front it only has one but it has a good amount of threading and one thing that i really like about all the threading on this flashlight is how deep the threading starts and what that means is that <clears throat> the actual body of the flashlight overlaps your waterproofing substantially so <clears throat> one thing I'll show here so you guys can see here uh, as I screw down it goes over both of the o-rings and it actually continues to go down well over them the actual body of the flashlight goes over them really well <clears throat> so that adds an extra layer of waterproofing I will also note that this flashlight it's not equipped on here but it does come out of box with a ring on it so you can put a ring on the back of this right around right around here and basically that ring has four chamfered cuts in it and that's designed to allow you to hold the flashlight with a more sure grip <clears throat> I personally did not like it and found it really hard to utilize that feature in pocket carry, so I quickly removed that ring, but it is certainly an addition. In addition to that, you also have a highly removable clip, and this is something else that I enjoy, is just how easy it is to pop off the clip. So if you do <clears throat> decide that you want to run it clean or you want to put this on a gun, because this could function quite well as a weapons-mounted light, especially for its compact size and its high output, um, this pocket clip is really easy to just pop off 
and it's gone quite easily. In addition, it's also pretty easy to put it back on. Now I will say, I say it's quite easy to take it on and off, but it's not so easy that it would just accidentally fall off. But at the same time, it's not so hard that unlike something like this, it's practically impossible to get off. Also going into features, I'm going to try and make this as fast as possible, but this flashlight is also compatible with two CR123s. So the T2 only uses CR123s. It is not large enough to accept the 18650 uh, with the battery. So this T2 here can't accept an 18650, but <clears throat> this can accept two CR123s. I will note that on, like most 18650 uh, flashlights, they are loose. So you'll hear it rattle around, hopefully. There's not too much rattle in here, but there is a little bit of rattle, but it will work, as you guys can see. <clears throat> it will definitely work with two CR123 batteries, so if you are like me and you do have quite a few CR123 battery flashlights, this is completely compatible with them, so that is another nice feature. Okay, so now that I've talked you guys' ears off with a whole lot of other things just going over this flashlight, now it's time to actually talk about the performance of the flashlight, and while I'll be doing this for kind of demonstration and showing you the uh, how the system works, I am actually going to be rolling in full Footage, night footage of me using this flashlight pitch black just kind of showing you guys how well this beam throws and just what it looks like now I didn't stack it or compare it against anything but <clears throat> it I just did a video individually showing its use footage of just how bright it gets so to start off this is another unusual factor of this flashlight is how it works so starting from a dead light so there's no light coming out of it if you want your strobe what you do is you hit the side to properly show I'll show you guys you hit the side of the clicky switch so <clears throat> this flashlight operates in two ways that you can hit the top of the flashlight the top of this clicky switch sorry and you hit the sides of these flashlights it also has cutouts in four different or three different places rather that allow you to easily and comfortably rest on the sides of the clicky switch but <clears throat> starting off if you want to hit your stroke function you can have momentary on momentary off just by from a dead flashlight no light coming out <clears throat> by hitting the side of the flashlight like that now if you hold it or if you just tap it fast you can see it'll come on immediately and go off immediately but if you hold it for about five seconds and then keep it on it will lock into strobe and something I do like about this strobe is it is a dynamic strobe so you guys can see that <clears throat> hopefully you can see in the flashlight or in the video that it actually is switching its pattern and then to turn off the strobe you just hit this button or you hit the side of the clicky switch just a little bit so you just do a quick tap on it and that turns it off <clears throat> so it does like I said have a dynamic strobe so it switches patterns to keep whatever you're trying to blind or whoever you're trying to blind keep their eyes constantly unadjusted to the light coming out <clears throat> so so now to the main functions of this flashlight. So the first one is of course, when you just click the back of the clicky switch, it comes on to its full 1100 lumen function. But if your battery is low and you put it in high mode and you leave it there for about 10 seconds, okay, it actually will show here. So you guys can see here that um, <clears throat> this battery is low right now. So you can see that it will uh, actually kind of flicker and that's on the highest function if you kick it down into a lower function it will not blink like that but if you have it in its brightest function this is the medium function but if you have it in its brightest function it will flicker like this to let you know that your battery is low and that it needs to be charged so that's another neat function that I do like about this uh, <clears throat> this flashlight but like I was saying this is your bright this is 1100 lumens here then hitting the switch you hit the side of the clicky switch to switch throughout your modes so you're actually gonna press the side of the clicky switch so if you start off from the brightest mode clicking it uh, for the first time will bring it into its lowest mode and then clicking it again will bring it into its mid-range so the medium on this flashlight <clears throat> is about how bright this flashlight is you guys can see here this is the t2 
on the uh, right side for you guys. This is the mech army on the left side for you guys. So you can see that these two are about the same actually. The mech army might be a little bit brighter in fact, but that's the medium setting for the mech army. And <clears throat> once again, the highest setting for the Innova T2 is 375 lumens. So this is probably around 400 here and it's medium setting. It's low setting is actually quite low. You guys can see here the uh, low setting for this one is that. And so I think it might still be a little bit brighter than the lowest setting for this one, but it's pretty low, especially being considered that it can get this bright. <clears throat> So anyways, to go through it, there is no speed. And one of the largest things that I actually enjoy about this flashlight over something like the Innova T2, or in the past I used the Streamlight um, Protac 2L, what I really like about this flashlight over these ones is the ease of use and how easy it is to get into the different positions that you want to. So if I want strobe, unlike in this one, if I want strobe, I have to double tap on the T2 fast, two fast clicks to get into strobe. And sometimes that can be frustrating because to get to the different modes on the T2, you have to just use a slower click to get through the different modes. Whereas sometimes I don't really want to sit around and transition through all those modes really slow I just want to get it right into that uh, low mode <clears throat> so that is something that I really like and, and, and in addition the strobe on the uh, SPX 10 is really confident it's really easy to just get into it and just go right to it and I like that especially for being a tactical flashlight I think the strobe should be a really easy and intuitive thing to activate just in case you have to use it for self-defense and that is something that I do like it's very easy it's very positive and intuitive to get right into strobe in addition though like I was saying uh, unlike in my other flashlights there's no uh, speed at which you have to use to transition between light modes I can transition as fast as I want or as slow as I want between these different light modes I can go really fast through the modes or I can go very slow through the modes and so that's something else that I really like and once again I'm not saying that you're gonna sit there practically using it going through your modes just for the fun of it but sometimes when I go into a mode I just want to be able to kick it into that that mode in particular really fast or sometimes I might realize I've been walking around in full mode for a few minutes and oh wait I should probably have a lower light I don't need to blind the person coming at me so I can choose it at whatever speed I need and that makes it a lot more realistic and a lot more practical for my personal lifestyle <clears throat> Anyways, now on to downsides. The largest downside I've actually had about this flashlight, and it is, it's a, it's a downside that you have to learn to work around, but it's per basically the only downside I have to this flashlight, and some people may consider the width or the bulk of this flashlight a downside. I don't really, because I'm used to everyday carrying something like an Innova T2, which is actually around the same size and width, and the Innova T2 is actually just a little bit bigger in overall size, so I'm, I'm pretty used used to actually carrying a flashlight of this size and width that's not really an issue for me and weight but the biggest issue for me is that because of how this um, <coughs> whole clicky switch works and how it all activates the flashlight I have actually had this flashlight accidentally engage on me a few times while I put it in my pocket because oftentimes I'll put it in a thigh pocket on one of my many pants my Carhartt pants and so when I go to sit down <coughs> or I brush up against something what can happen is it'll accidentally hit like this and then it'll lock into the strobe mode but since it's in my pants I can't really see that it's on so that has been an issue and has actually led to accidentally draining this battery pretty good a handful of times and normally how I'll notice that it's actually on is I'll begin to feel something really hot on my thigh and I'll be like wow that is exceedingly hot then I pull out this flashlight and it's blaring away at this you know kind of speed and uh, it, this thing gets really hot if you leave it on at 1100 lumens and so <clears throat> that is the biggest downside for me personally is that 
if you're not really careful with this flashlight and how you everyday carry it, uh, this this uh, clicky switch here is very sensitive and it's very easy to accidentally activate it and for the uh, flashlight to unintentionally drain your battery. So do keep that in mind if you do end up going for an SBX10 that in as far as using the clicky switch goes, I really enjoy it, but it definitely has some downsides to being such an open and exposed and sensitive uh, piece of <clears throat> or clicky switch just in general. So <clears throat> that is basically the only downside I have to it. This flashlight is not horribly priced. It's around $80 uh, if I remember correctly, but I think that's pretty good for everything you're getting here. Really, this is a pretty rock solid ironclad flashlight. And of course, it is a part of the kind of newer flashlights that emit just stupid amounts of lumens. I will say this is my first over a thousand lumen flashlight and they are really fun to play around with. Alaska, especially at night, gets really dark out here so or outside. And so you can just walk outside, just boom, hit it with the full 1100 lumens and just see how much it lights up. And I will say this flashlight in all of its modes, but especially it's 1100 lumen, mode really throws a distance uh, it can easily shoot 500 600 feet easily so <clears throat> it does not have too much of a white out but it is a very concentrated beam as you guys can hopefully kind of see here it has a very nice hot spot on it and uh, it really projects itself nicely i really do enjoy that anyways uh, that, that has been a action-packed, really long review on this little Mech Army SPX-10, but there is a lot to go over with this flashlight. It has a lot of different things to it that I thought were interesting, and I wanted to just make sure that I covered everything for you guys so that you got the best idea of what this flashlight was capable of, what it looked like, and overall, just what, what this flashlight was about. Like I said, I really enjoy this flashlight. I basically came from this flashlight, or th to this flashlight, flashlight from the Innova T2, which in all honesty, this 375 lumen flashlight is not bad, especially in the dark, but I really love this SPX because it just is so bright and it really, it has a lot of awesome tactical features to it. Like I said, the only real downside to me is just in an everyday carry circumstance, if you're not going to carry it in its sheath, which no one really does, um, definitely make sure to keep this uh, <clears throat> clicky switch guarded because it can act be accidentally triggered and drain your battery which really sucks anyways guys that's all for now and god bless and i'm out